Guys, as we mentioned, looking for that first professional win, uh, even on the heights and four inch reach advantage for Kid Lightning. Let's get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening preliminary contest brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Flyweight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist is 5 feet 5 inches tall and he weighed officially at 124.5 pounds. Fighting out of El Campo, Texas, today he looks for his second win as a pro. This is Kid Lightning, Joseph Aguilar. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands 5 feet 5 inches tall and he weighed in at 126.4 pounds. Fighting out of Pearland, Texas, today he looks for his first win as a pro. This is the Texas Outlaw, Dominic Perez. Your referee in charge of the action, Professor Joe Solis. All right, Professor Joe Solis gets the first assignment of the night here on our prelims broadcast. Kid Lightning in the blue gloves, Perez in the red. Perez comes out to a nice kick there from Kid Lightning. Yeah, Kid Lightning could be the nickname of every 125er on the planet. <laughs> Just want to make that clear. These guys are super fast. Joseph is super fast. He's also so unorthodox in the way he throws his strikes. You know, I heard you talking about Dom earlier. Joseph is 7-1 in the game with like three different titles. Yeah. He's just another guy who like when you make that change to the pro, the speed, the strength, the power, and little small things, every fight he lost, he was winning. Yeah. And you've had a chance to work with him. Uh, part of his fight camp was at Strong Style MMA. Uh, head coach Samantha Birdmaster, who is the mo that, the the true the visionary. Brains. Yeah, for sure. She's definitely the brains, <laughs> the brains behind this, for sure. Uh, but you've had a chance to work with them a little bit, and, and that's the big thing y'all have been working on is you're in the fight, you're you're yeah. controlling it. We just got to figure out how to finish this now. Yeah, for Joseph, it's about winning moments. You know, he's he's so good. Uh, it, he really has not shown yet as a pro even the tip of how, how good he is. He's very composed. Uh, he has good pressure. His grappling is not. He, he has a purple belt, but he could very easily be a brown belt and towards like that. He's very, very good. Um, beautiful spin back kick there from Joseph. You know, his timing on, on stuff is weird. Yeah. The timing, he just did that back kick. You didn't really see it. Before. So sneaky with the shots. Michael, we remember watching Dominic Perez against Isaiah Torres, and he looks so sharp. He just looks so much better than he had before. Yeah, and, you know, both these guys, I mean, you can see it. And typically whenever someone is kind of chasing a victory, uh, you know, you kind of see it in their stance. And both these guys are very relaxed right now. Both these guys defending well. You know, both guys are very active. So, you know, this is going to be one of those fights that it's going to be who wears down first and then, you know, how do you react whenever you get that first punch to the chin or to the eye and, you know, how you, how you get, how do you come back from that? Look at our keeping his chin really high as, as he backs out. He's got to be careful though. Those, those overhands from a Perez are going to sneak in there. Perez also the owner of BJJ TXO Academy. Over two division champ. Training with uh, Drew Tychek as well. ACS MMA. Drew's asking him to t turn it up a little bit. You know, he's yeah. saying, hey man, we're, we're, not, this is, we're not sparring right now. And, and yeah, you can kind of see that Dom isn't really committing to his shots. He's just kind of halfway throwing it right now. And every time he gets in there, that knee from Aguilar. Oh, Ooh. so unorthodox, man. His timing was stuff. Oh, there's that overhand left you talked about, Rich. And also Aguilar, whenever he's retreating, he's got to learn not to go straight back. Yeah. He is retreating straight back. Eventually, someone's going to chase him, and that cage is going to end his uh, end his uh, his retreat. And he's going to run right into someone, and you know that's whenever those flying knees happen. That's whenever those Superman punches happen that really surprise you. That even if you block, they're really difficult. They can cause some damage. You know that's honestly where a lot of these young fighters can learn from going to an experienced boxing. Coach. Oh yeah, because boxing is all about finding your angles, not getting on the ropes. And you know in MMA, we do rely too much on getting straight back, hoping we can duck under and find a double or something of that nature. And he, yeah, he's retreating straight back, and you know, Dominic keep blitzes for, uh, keeps blitzing forward the way he is. It can be very dangerous for Joseph. 130 left in round one. First fight of the night on our prelims broadcast. 
Got six scheduled here for you on prelims, eight on the main card. We go live at 4.30 p.m. on UFC Fight Pass, 4.30 Central. No word. We have an audience from all over the world, which we appreciate. Thank you for all the comments on YouTube. Thanks for being kind to us. Yeah. Pretty rough there for a stretch there, but they like us now. Well, they now, really like now that us. You, now that you said that, you're going to get the yeah, worst yeah. vile stuff possible post. And it's funny. I see the comments three months later because I go back and watch the fights. Right? Usually right. fighters on a three-month schedule. So I'll see it three months later. I'm like, wait, now it's too late to respond <laughs> as well. <laughs> Good use of the front kick there from Kid Lightning. Throughout round one. Yeah, one thing you have noticed is that he's got a four inch reach advantage and he's used it. Mm, he's he's right there. able to reach uh, Perez from places that Perez is not able to reach him. Those those low kicks too are starting to add up. You can see the, the movement from Perez is starting to slow down a little bit. Still neither neither fighter's really committed to combinations yet. It's big, big explosive movements. Uh, you know, a few jumping knees and some spinning back stuff from, from Aguilar. Nice elbow. Here the 10 second mark. Again. And very active round one for both of these guys. Stuff on the call, I think I'd have to give Aguilar the edge there in round one. I think he landed the better of the punches, but not a bad round for Dominic Perez. Yeah, not at all. Just a slight advantage, maybe, yeah. but you know, Dominic got a little bit more aggressive after the halfway point. Take a look at our round one highlights. Yeah, you see over and over, Perez landed that overhand left. He was kind of going in low, looking for some body shots, not really expecting those to land, but then following up with that overhand left. And it landed a few times. Very tricky striking there from Aguilar a few times. You see that overhand left there again, lands right on the chin. Boy, Aguilar, no worse for the wear, though. It kept right on coming forward. That woke, that woke up Aguilar. You see the <laughs> eyes? Hey, the, the replay booth is on it tonight. <laughs> Shout out hey. to the guys in the truck. And they're room. always on it. Our friends at DNA Studios, who, by the way, award-winning <laughs> broadcast for Fury FC. They won a telly for us. Really? Uh, so, hey, yeah. You're I'm, welcome. Yeah, yeah, we, you're yeah welcome. I was going to say, hey. we should take credit for that. <laughs> they, they, won, <laughs> they, they, they won in spite of us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what they would say, for sure. <laughs> No, we love our entire team there, Brian, Sam, the whole crew. They do such a great job. Round yeah. two. And if you guys see what it takes to put on one of these shows, it's amazing that these guys uh, continue to want to do this, uh, uh, you know, week after week. It's it's pretty amazing. Hey, shout out to Van, man, unspoken hero. Help us out oh, yeah. every night here. I hope you don't fall off the boat, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's on a boat right now on a fishing trip yeah. watching this. He's, he's, he's going to become bait for some kind of big way. Yeah. <laughs> Perez turning up the heat here a little bit in the second round. Coming in being a little bit more aggressive. Maybe trying to match the, the striking style of Aguilar a little bit. Trying to be a little more unpredictable. This is where Perez was so good in that fight against Torres. Is when he started getting more aggressive. Started pushing forward a little bit more. That's where he started taking over. Let's see if he continue here in round two. Ooh, oh, attempt there. Big right hand to the chin. Aguilar's got to be careful. Perez is starting to find a place for both hands. He's landing hard. You know, I really would like to see Aguilar take this fight to the ground. It's pretty close on the field. Right now it's pretty close back and forth. His grappling is phenomenal. I really would like to see him. Make an effort to maybe there we go. There. He's get it to the ground. He heard you, Rich. My man. It's almost like you know the fighter. Yeah, I think he said watch this right <laughs> before he did that. Yeah. I have an idea here, Rich. What do you think about this? The Fury Unleashed podcast, which you can get everywhere right now. One of my favorite podcasts. Love, re love the recaps and the previews that you guys do. And again, I think the invitation to be on the podcast got lost in the mail. It's okay. Yeah, they did. Look, the post service is overworked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hot outside. Did yeah. you check your facts? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I did. There's nothing there. But I did get a car warranty request uh, on my facts line. But what are your thoughts about doing a Fury Unleashed live broadcast while we call the fights? 
Man, you know the honestly the hardest part about that? It sounds amazing. It sounds phenomenal to do a watch along. It's so hard for Eric and I to get away from what we're doing when, to, when, when oh, the show real starts. Work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We actually have to do, do our jobs. And like right now, I've got a, a young kid. Shout out to Caleb, an aspiring photographer in, in my family who wants to get out there and so he's able to help me. Hey, man, come shoot for a little bit. And he's excited about not getting paid to do work. So yeah. I'll put him <laughs> Man, it actually sounds phenomenal. Watch along with it. Ooh, big oh, nice. Very nice. Dominic doing a good job of making sure he stayed clear of those legs. And he did not get trapped in the guard. Has a nasty guillotine that he can readjust. And he also he switches to Darces very well. Yeah, I'm not surprised with those long arms, those long, thin arms. Those darts chokes. Hang, a favorite on, of mine also. Man, hanging on that head too long. Yeah, Mike, you, you know you can't just hang on to that head when the guy's already passing your side no. control. No, once those knees have passed, you've got to let go of that head and start defending to get away. And Unfortunately, in these positions, side control and mount, you're going to take a little bit of punishment whenever you're trying to get out of there. But you cannot get in these positions. You know, oddly enough, he's framing on the opposite side with his legs, too. Like that, That's not really stopping the mount. Um, I don't know if he's maybe trying to work and set up a, a buggy choke or something of that nature. It looked like he was trying to land some knees from side yeah. control. That's yeah. a losing battle, I can assure you of that. <laughs> that is a good, tight side control from Perez. Aguilar's got a good, usually a pretty good switch here to be able to get out. Uh, he'll just start to dig for underhooks on that left side. Uh, let's try to sweep that knee back inside. But, man, Perez's his side control is so tight here. Under one minute left. And that left elbow was scraping up against the neck of Aguilar. Yeah, I mean, Aguilar's trying to do some damage to show that he's doing something from the bottom. But the, the route needs to be, he's got to get up right here. Yeah. yeah, he really needs to get up. And his left arm is in a little bit of trouble. I don't know what Perez's grappling chops are, but his left arm is just in a little bit of trouble. There's a really nice way to figure four the way he was framing right there in the front. But free now. Aguilar looking like he's just trying to hold the posture down, maybe trying to get stood up. It's really hard to get out of side control. Perhaps Professor Joe Solis is going to let you have side control, man. He's not going to stand you up there. Yeah, especially when Perez is, you know, he's landing punches. He's he's active from the top. So, yeah, got to be careful here. Ooh, nice that little butt kick. Nice kick to the butt. <laughs> right to the, to the groin. That yeah. Was, uh, was, uh, am I allowed to say the G word? Uh, yeah. Can, a, can we say taint? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't want to say taint. Were you going to say were you gonna you right in the goose? Oh, I thought you were going to say the grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the medical term for that spot? Maybe we can use that. Where's yeah. Shannon Orsak at? Let me <laughs> ask him real quick. Here we go, second round. Dominic Perez turning up the heat just a little bit. You see a hard body kick there landed by Aguilar, and it looked like Perez, it just kind of, you know, brought the dog out in him. He... Uh, started to take over the round. I think that's definitely a Dominic Perez round. Went for the takedown. Got a big takedown here. Cleared the legs. Got the side control. And then this is kind of how it ended right up until the, the tank kick. And you'll see it happen right here. Yep. Nope, that wasn't. Looked like that was a clean kick right to the back of the hamstring. I know that hurts, but yeah, not, not a, not a foul there. It looked like to us on the replay. Man, I think that takedown and, and holding the side control yeah. probably gave Perez that round. Yeah, so it's probably 1-1 so. going into this final round. That's yeah. how I've got it. All right, third and final round. Good start to the card. I think both of these fighters, as, as a coach, you want to see him take a risk at this point. You know, you you got upside-down records. You're at your front end. you got another guy with an upside-down record. Take take a risk. Let, let's try and finish this fight. Don't go to the judges. Man, I just feel like I think you're right, Rich, and I think if – one of those guys would pour it on with some combinations and then just be relentless in their pressure, you know, for a minute. I think, I feel like this fight would, you know, that person would take over the other person. So generally when Aguilar starts throwing these overhands, you're going to see when he's starting to get comfortable, he may look to take flight and throw a flying knee. Like, he loves to throw flying knees. Um, and, man, I'm all for it. But also right now the risk, if you get held down, he wasn't able to get back up. Yeah, yeah. So he probably had a chance to train that flying knee. Was Ali Mon around? <laughs> yes, he was. Man. Yes, he was. That all-star Ali Mon been making his pro debut in 827. Oh, official. Yes, sir. All official. Right. Contracts are signed. Time to go make some money. Nice 
high low. kick there. Yeah, another nice low kick. Aguilar was doing well with those low kicks in the first round, but he kind of gave up on them in the second. Let's see how Perez's was, yeah. bottom game is now. Aguilar's very good at high stepping over to, to half guard. Let's see if he starts to work that and get in there. He's got to address the, uh, the high guard here. Nice little Omoplata transition there. Let's see, Omoplata's not great in MMA, but let's see if he can use it as an opportunity here to maybe get himself in a better position. Uh, so very awkward position there for Aguilar. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this position that actually is uh, Mackenzie Dern, one of her fa favorite spots to get to. She Omoplata's and takes you back and chokes you out there. Right? He's got to get that arm free and turn into him. That left arm is There's a all lot tied of pressure up. on that arm, man. Yeah, almost just, like a ooh, that bend right now. Good job from Aguilar to retain top position. But he's got to do some damage. Yeah, Perez trying to change the angle. Looks like he's trying to get him back in that own plot of position. few seconds to recover here for both fighters. Output just dropping a little bit as we just crossed the halfway point of our final round in our first fight. By the way, Fight Clock brought to you by OnlyFans. Make sure you subscribe to the Fury FC OnlyFans page for exclusive content and every single image from tonight's event. All you fighters out there. And special feet picks. Mm. Oh, Yay. <laughs> Sorry if it's mine. Yeah, Sorry it was in advance. <laughs> All right, take a look at our Ooh. This little split screen action for our viewers at home. Two angles for the price of one. Yeah, you see Dominic Perez on the bottom again. He's trying to change that angle. In order for that to be effective, he's got to get Aguilar off center. He's got to get him to one side or the other. Whichever side he's going to, he's got to push the head to the other side and kind of isolate that arm. Or, and there's, you know, there's a couple different options from there. You switch to the arm bar from the guard, which is not likely at this stage of the, of an MMA fight. It's very, very difficult when they're this slippery. Perez's, his corner is imploring him to, to wrestle up, get up. Oh, Joe Soli stopping the, stopping oh, wow. the action here. Yeah, there really wasn't much being done there, in my opinion. Joe Soli's there was, had enough of that. You know, that there wasn't, but I would definitely like to see, make the fighter get up. You work hard to get someone to the bottom, make them get up. Big head kick there from Aguilar. We got about a minute to impress the judges right now. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think either one of these guys want this to go to the judges. This, I mean, this has been a great fight so far, but you know, both guys have done well, but it's really unpredictable right now. <laughs> this third round is really close. Beautiful step in knee there from Aguilar. See if he can follow. His knees are nice one. Again, chin up on the way out. Yeah, nice left hand there from Dominic Perez. All right, 30 seconds left. Who has the round right now in your eyes? Yeah. If, if Aguilar finishes this takedown, I'll probably give it to him. Yeah, I, I would. Well, sure. and Perez bumped sure. right up. It's a very close round. You know, the biggest damage has come from Aguilar, but there's been a lot of control from Perez, man. He's landed some shots as well. I don't know. It's super close. I'm extremely biased. Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, Aguilar had the control. Sorry, Michael. Yeah. Um, the damage, I would say it's kind of even. Really not much damage to show right now. We'll see how the judges scored. It'll also be our first look at what the judges are weighing here tonight in Houston for Fury FC 80. Take a look at our highlights for round three as the judges calculate everything up. Yeah, I think Aguilar started the round with that leg kick again, and, you know, he kind of abandoned those after the first round. But to me, this is the highlight of the third round here. Perez, you know, not able to do a ton of damage from here, but had him stuck. And, you know, if he was able to keep him in that position uh, for a little bit longer, I mean, that might have been what swayed the judges still maybe. Uh, a couple of takedown attempts from, from Aguilar, uh, not able to get him down. Um, I don't know. This is going to be a really, really close one. Or able to get him down, but Perez was able to jump right back up. But neither fighter really did much damage in the third round. Uh, you know, even with the Omoplata and, you know, holding him there and had a, his face wide open, he was kind of barely hitting him with the back of his fist and uh, not really causing any damage. That could have been devastating, but this is going to be a tough one. 
I just want to lay out. We mentioned just Spain against oh. Travis Gregoire. That's going to be our co-main for our prelims. And if you want to just see the size discrepancy, go to our Instagram page. Just look up Fury FC on Instagram, and you will see on the reel from yesterday yeah. how big the Spain is. Look, I'm, I'm not a tiny person, but there's a few people, and he's one of them that makes me go, man, I'm not a real person, am I? Give you some scale. Eric Garcia is six foot two, <laughs> and so that'll tell you how big the Spain is. <laughs> All right, let's go inside to see how the judges scored this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by OnlyFans. All three judges score the fight 29-28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision. Wow, unanimous decision win for Kid Lightning. What do you guys think? I mean, 29-28, I mean, that's kind of the way you thought it would go. It was just unclear about which way it would go. But anytime you leave it to the judges when it's that close, you've got to expect that one guy's going to be extremely disappointed. I definitely think the bigger actions, the bigger damage what was done by Aguilar. But again, extremely close. All right, let's go inside the way to meet our next fighter.